Good morning. This is Jason Dean coming live at you again for another Film Fanatic Bonanza. It is uh, Thursday at about 11.39. Hope everyone's doing good. So I've been doing these series. I've, I've done two videos on two movies from, I think, one of the most important directors in all of horror and especially in the horror exploitation world. And that is William Castle. I did Mr. Sardonicus yesterday. I did a video on on his on on this wonderful movie, Mr. Sardonicus, and then I did another movie before that called Homicidal. Both of these movies came out in 1961, and uh, just amazing, just amazing films. They're so beautifully shot. They're super low budget. They have this real gritty, gothic quality to them. They have. Homicidal has this real sleazy kind of vibe to it. It's a essentially at face value, it's it's kind of a ripoff of Psycho. But I think again, I talked a lot about what I think separates exploitation movies from, say, big Hollywood budget movies when it comes to movies that uh, try to replicate or or steal ideas from other movies, particularly movies that are hits. And I definitely consider these two films and the work of of Castle to be just incredibly important. He is probably most well known for the house, the house on Haunted Hill, which starred uh, Vincent Price, also which was also a remake. There was a remake of that that came out about 10 years ago or so. And there was he also did a film called 13 Ghosts, which was also uh, remade. I don't think I've seen either of the remakes, but I am a huge fan of William Castle. The, uh, you know, again, I feel like he is definitely one of the most important filmmakers, especially when it comes to the world of horror exploitation. Incredibly, incredibly influential. And I think his films were definitely pushing the envelope when you consider when they came out, 61, which is mind-boggling to me. Every time I, I have seen one of his films, especially Homicidal, which is a pretty graphic movie, I'm always blown away by when that came out and a movie that's like you know close to 60 years old like it's just wild but again one of the most important directors and today's show is going to be on a movie and also a director which brought me back to investigating and re uh re-watching a lot of william castle movies i grew up watching you know, a bunch of his films as a kid, but I never really dove deeply into his catalog. And I came across him more and more, and this, the last couple of years, I have gone and bought some of his movies and have, you know, tried to take that deep dive into his uh, catalog. And the way, the reason, or the way it happened was all due to this amazing movie right here, The Eyes of My Mother, which is a an amazing horror film that came out in 2016. I think it's one of the best, one of the best more modern day horror films ever. I think it's incredibly well crafted and it was directed by Nicholas Pess. And it came out in 2016. The reason and the way I got back into checking out William Castle was there's a, on this, on this disc here uh, for this movie, there's a really awesome special features component with this disc. This is an uh, I'm going to go into this movie in a few seconds here. But there's a really awesome interview with with Nicholas Peace where he talks about the influences, you know, and what brought him to uh to the realization that he wanted to be a filmmaker. And he really talked extensively about William Castle being a huge influence on him. And you can totally see the influence because this film is also shot in black and white. It has a real classic um, 
vibe to it. It you know it's it takes place in more or less a, a modern time period, but it's also kind of ambiguous. It could be it could have taken place in the fifties or sixties or or say in two thousand twenty three. It has a, a certain kind of ambiguous ambiguous quality to it, which I think is really awesome. But it's very gothic. It has a huge and very obvious influence by William, from William Castle. So when I came across this interview, because I was fascinated by this movie, I was like, oh, I got to check out, I got to take a deep dive and reinvestigate the films of William Castle. So I figured I would do this movie today to kind of tie in the other films I covered with William Castle to kind of tie in this whole thing on how I, you know, got reintroduced to him as a director. And again, this movie came out in 2016, easily one of the best more modern day horror films. I don't hear this film really talked about very much. I have this uh, on Blu-ray and it is a really, really great quality Blu-ray. The quality, uh, the transfer of this on, on Blu-ray is amazing. This film was released. It did have a theatrical release when it came out. But uh, I was uh, kind of late to the game when I saw this. I saw this maybe a couple of years after it came out on DVD. But again, so worth, worth the wait. It's an incredibly disturbing movie. It's basically centered on this woman who is living at, on this incredibly isolated uh, farm and she has this this life of where she has no interaction with other people and and her mother is basically like this kind of uh, homicidal maniac and she kind of raises her and a, a series of events happen where there's a, a home invasion without giving anything away and you and it becomes the film becomes like a character study of the main character who is who is the the daughter and she basically uh, goes completely insane and she goes kind of on this rampage of, of where she becomes the serial killer and she kind of lures these these victims and these people that she meets or befriends to the farm and she uh has all kinds of hideous ways of how she kills these people and it's this movie is so incredibly creepy the atmosphere is amazing. Again, I always say that one of the biggest selling points for me for horror films, for loving a horror film, is the atmosphere. And this film is all about the atmosphere. The music is is just incredible. The direction is, is really great. The story is highly so highly original. The script is so well done. The acting is, is superb. And it's the uh, this film is also incredibly disturbing. There's some things in this film that are kind of gut wrenching and the uh it's it's one of those films too i feel that like starts off with a bang and then ends with a bang it and it and it just and it's a slow burn it's a slow burn of a film it really it doesn't have your typical you know hollywood cliched uh jump scares like you know as far as newer horror films you know, a lot of newer horror films, they're really great, but a lot of the times, I think certain things, certain surprises are let out of the bag. And I think a lot of the times that's attributed to kind of the, the jump scare kind of scenario or the the way the editing is. And a lot of the times with the, the film score for a movie, you're, you're kind of being ham-handed a scene or the scenario in a film of when, okay, this is when things are supposed to be scarier. This is when you're supposed to be, this is when you're supposed to be jumping out of your seat and you can kind of see it coming. This film is not about that. It's very subtle. And again, it starts off with this incredible opening scene. The, the first, there's like a um, seven to 10 minute sequence in the beginning of this film of where, of where you're, introduced to this family that lives on this farm and then there's also this other character who comes comes to their house and you realize some you know serious shit is about to go down and i don't want to give give anything away i'm not into the whole spoiler thing i think it's pretty hard sometimes on youtube when you watch film reviews uh because of the the angle that a lot of people uh, on how they they will talk about a movie it's it's really impossible to uh you know 
to stay away from spoilers. I try to keep all of those things under wrap, under wraps, you know, in any way possible, in every way possible. And again, it's got one of the strongest openings. And then again, it's a very, it's a slow burn movie. It feels like it's almost like a foreign film, the way you're you, and and the pacing of it is you're, you're getting just enough information as you go to to understand what's going on to kind of grasp who these characters are and the scenario of the story and and what have you it's got that very slow turning kind of vibe to it and it's it's amazing it's it's incredible it has a a wonderful aesthetic it's a beautiful film it's it's one of those interesting films too where i i'm a big fan of juxtaposition When I talk of juxtaposition, I mean things of where there's a, well, obvious and obvious, like, I, I'm a big fan of when things are kind of ambiguous, when you're not sure if, uh, you know, it, you could label the scenario as, say, good or bad, and it just has this middle ground kind of gray area. But with the juxtaposition thing, I think even more in terms of something that has, that's really beautiful and gorgeous but at the same time it can be really horrific and and terrifying and very uh something out of a nightmare and i feel like the eyes of my mother has that kind of thing to it where it's the story itself is is uh gut-wrenching and and super depressing but it's also completely horrifying and i found myself as a fan of this movie and i've seen this movie many many times I found myself having total empathy for uh, for the characters, particularly around the main character, and also her victims. The 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 actors who play her victims that kind of get lured into coming to this farmhouse are they're just so well done. Uh, and it really dives deeply into kind of the dynamic of you know a mother daughter the mother daughter kind of chemistry or the mother daughter relationship. It does such a great job with that. And what I mean in terms of juxtaposition is that the core film is is you know 100% horror and it's just not like a, a nightmare but it's so beautifully shot and it's so well paced that it, it has this beauty to it so it, it's a very interesting kind of contrast and I'm a huge fan of that of where you can you know where it, it could have a nightmarish quality to it but it's also gorgeous and beautiful and lush and this film completely uh, encapsulates all of those qualities. And again, I can't say enough things about this film. Nicholas Nicholas Pace, I haven't really seen. I haven't seen any of his other films, and I'm very curious. I know a few years back he directed a remake of The Ring, which I heard wasn't very very good, um, but. Or actually, sorry, The Grudge, which came out in 2020. I do want to see it at some point, but I've never seen it. He also did another film called The Piercing in 2018, and also The Caretaker in 2018. So I'm curious. I have to check out, I'd like to check out his other work. Just because the, the level of craftsmanship for this film is so, such a, it's such a high level. This, this film, again, like I said, has a huge influence from William Castle. It's got that real classic gothic vibe to it. And, it, you know, William Castle, I consider to be uh, definitely uh, a lot of his films, especially homicidal, to be in the, the horror exploitation world. So this does have that kind of quality to it, but it's very high level at the same time, which is a real interesting kind of combination of things also. Another film that this reminds me of as far as taking, you know, films that are maybe slightly campy, you know, the older, old school horror exploitation kind of thing, but yet taking it and trying to make the greatest uh, film with those attributes is uh, Mandy with Nicolas Cage. Kind of similar, like really at its core, it's, it's influenced by a lot of, you know, B-movies, exploitation movies, and, and kind of trashy film. 
kind of like trashy films that came out in the 70s and 80s, but yet it's so incredibly highly elevated in that film uh, for Mandy. And I feel like this is kind of cut from that same cloth. It's very much influenced by William Castle and other filmmakers, Roger Corman, but it's it's done at a really high level um, with a high level aesthetic. And again, it's but at the same time, it's incredibly low budget. But yeah, 2016, The Eyes of My Mother, I can't recommend this movie enough. I never hear this movie talked about and when people talk about more modern horror films, like this has been out for a few years now, 2016, but it, I never hear this movie talked about, and it's one of the best. It's definitely one of the one of the greatest, one of the most original, one of the most shocking, one of the most horrific, uh, more modern day horror films ever. So, this is Jason Dean, film fanatic. Really appreciate all the support people have been giving uh, this channel the last few months. And, you know, been cranking out these videos. So thanks again, and we will see you next time. Peace.